All right, so we're going to like journey back in time. You ready? Into the mind of H.G. Wells, the science fiction guy who seemed to have a crystal ball for a brain. Mm. We're talking atomic bombs, lasers, even hints of television, mm. all predicted way before they even existed. It is really incredible how Wells, a scientist, was able to like extrapolate from the trends of his day mm -hmm. and paint such a vivid picture of the future. Yeah. Some of his ideas, like time machines, well, those still kind of belong in the world of fiction. Yeah. But others, well, let's just say he hit the nail on the head with astonishing accuracy. And that brings us to, like, the heart of this deep dive. Yeah. The world brain. Yeah. This wasn't just, like, some sci-fi thing. Yeah. It was an actual concept that Wells argued for back in 1936. Wow. Imagine a world right on the brink of another war, yeah. grappling with economic depression and rising nationalism. Yeah. This is where Wells steps in, yeah. right? Deeply concerned with how fragmented and inaccessible knowledge was. That absolutely. Like it was a huge threat to humanity's progress. Survival even. Even survival. Mm. So he proposed this like radical solution, a globally interconnected system of knowledge, constantly updated, accessible to everyone. He called it the world brain. Right. So not like a literal brain, right. like a metaphor. Exactly. For a dynamic, ever-growing encyclopedia encompassing all of human knowledge. I love it. He even like envisioned it being able to like reproduce itself anywhere in the world to protect it from danger, like interruption. Wait, does that sound familiar? It's uncanny yeah. how closely this aligns with like the internet we know today. It's true. That decentralized nature, the ability to access information from basically anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's like he was peering through a wormhole at the 21st century. He even used the phrase, the whole human memory being made accessible. He did. I mean, come on. <sighs> Could he have been any closer to describing Wikipedia or online libraries or just the vast databases we have today? It's as if he foresaw like the very architecture of the internet with information distributed across, you know, countless servers and networks. He even predicted like the anxieties we face. Totally. About the security and reliability of such a system. Speaking of predictions, let's not forget, he also called out the shortcomings of traditional education. Well, yeah. Wells was scathing yeah. in his critique, calling it barbaric. Straight up. And arguing that it failed to equip people for the complexities of the modern world. Absolutely. He saw how outdated curriculums with their emphasis on nationalistic histories were actually hindering global understanding. Yeah. He envisioned a system of lifelong learning accessible to everyone, focused on critical thinking and a global perspective. He even said, quote, our schools take the growing mind at a naturally barbaric phase and they inflame and fix its barbarism. Ouch. That's got to sting for those still clinging to outdated teaching methods. For sure. But beyond like the structure of the Internet, what about its thinking capacity? Did Wells also foresee the rise of artificial intelligence? Interesting question. Yeah. While he didn't explicitly use the term AI, Wells understood that the world brain couldn't just be a passive repository of information. Right. He emphasized the need for it to, you know, actively synthesize, analyze, and even offer solutions to complex problems. He basically described a system that could think for itself, learn, and evolve. And isn't that precisely what we're seeing with AI today? It really is. Algorithms that can sift through mountains of data, mm. identify patterns, and even make predictions. It's like we're building the thinking part of Wells' world brain piece by piece. It's true. Wells might not have known about algorithms or machine learning, you know? Yeah. But he grasped the core concept, a system that could process information on a scale beyond human capability mm. and then offer insights that would otherwise remain hidden. It's as if he understood the potential of a non-human intelligence working in concert with our own. Which is both fascinating and a little bit unnerving, right? We've got this incredibly powerful tool at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. But are we using it responsibly? Are we living up to Wells' vision of a world brain that elevates humanity? Or are we letting it become something less than what he hoped for? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Wells was both optimistic about the potential of the world brain and also deeply concerned about its misuse. Yeah. He feared that it could become a tool for propaganda, control, and the suppression of dissenting voices. And in a world grappling with misinformation and data privacy issues and, like, the power of tech giants, yeah. it's clear those concerns weren't unfounded. It seems Wells, with his incredible foresight, was warning us about the potential pitfalls of our own creation. 
And that's why his work is so relevant today. It's not just about marveling at his predictions, but about grappling with the ethical implications of the technology we're building. So what does this all mean for us living in the age of the world brain? We've got access to more information than ever before, but that also comes with a whole new set of challenges. We can't just be passive consumers of information. We need to be active. Critical thinkers, discerning the truth from the noise, and using our knowledge to build a better world. Okay, I'm sensing a major responsibility here. Yeah. But before we dive into the how-to of being responsible citizens of the world brain, okay. let's just take a moment to appreciate the sheer genius of H.G. Wells. Yeah. The man was practically a time traveler with a pen. It's incredible how accurately he predicted the world we live in today. It really is remarkable how Wells saw the trajectory of technology, you know, so clearly. Mm. But, you know, as we said, his vision wasn't just about celebrating all this progress. Right. He issued some warnings, too, about, like, the potential dangers of this interconnected world. Right. He wasn't naive to the downsides. Yeah. He saw how easily the world brain could be, like, manipulated or how it could be used to amplify inequalities or even like create new ones yeah it's like he anticipated the whole debate we have around algorithmic bias uh -huh. or the spread of misinformation and the erosion of privacy in like the digital age and that's why his work is so important for us today it's a call to action a reminder that we can't just assume technology will automatically lead to a better future yeah. we have a responsibility to shape this powerful tool and make sure that it's used to better humanity Okay, I'm getting that sense of responsibility. Yeah. But it's a bit daunting, isn't it? I mean, where do we even begin? How do we as individuals influence something as vast and complex as the world brain? Well, Wells gave us some clues. He believed that education was really key, but mm -hmm. not the kind that just fills our heads with facts and figures. Right. He advocated for what he called liberal education a system that fosters critical thinking, encourages global awareness, and prepares individuals to be active, engaged citizens of the world. So it's not just about being knowledgeable. Right. We also need to know how to think critically about that knowledge. Exactly. Question assumptions, identify biases, and evaluate information effectively. That sounds like a pretty tall order in today's world with all this information overload. It's a challenge for sure. But it's an essential skill to navigate this digital landscape. Yeah. Wells argued that we need to discern truth from noise, mm -hmm. recognize propaganda and misinformation, and engage in like a constructive dialogue yeah. with those who hold different viewpoints. He had some pretty radical ideas about how education should be structured, too. Oh, yeah. He suggested that we move away from the traditional focus on nationalistic histories. Okay. And instead, adopt a more global perspective, starting with a foundation in anthropology and the common origins of human civilization. He believed that by understanding our shared human heritage, we could like transcend these artificial divisions of nationalism yeah. and build a more unified and cooperative global society. It's a pretty powerful idea, especially today where it seems like conflict and division are on the rise. So step one, become critical thinkers. Yeah. We need to be aware of our own biases yeah. and be skilled at evaluating information from many different sources. For sure. And step two, embrace a global perspective. You know, recognize our shared humanity and work to, like, bridge the divides that separate us. Yeah. It's starting to feel like a recipe for a more enlightened and interconnected world. It certainly aligns with Wells's vision of a world brain that serves as a force for good, a catalyst for peace and progress. But he knew achieving this vision wouldn't be easy. Right. It requires constant vigilance. Yeah. And a commitment to use knowledge wisely and ethically. He was particularly worried about the potential for control and manipulation, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He saw how this powerful tool can be used to suppress different voices, spread propaganda, and reinforce existing power structures. And his concerns were valid. You know, we've seen how technology can be used for both good and bad. Yeah. And the world brain is no exception. It's our responsibility to make sure it's used to empower individuals, promote transparency, and foster a more just and equitable society. Okay, I am really feeling the weight of responsibility here. Mm -hmm. But I'm also feeling a sense of hope. Yeah. Right. We have the tools and knowledge to shape the world brain into something truly remarkable. But it's going to require a conscious effort. 
a collective commitment to use this technology for the benefit of humankind. And that's where the conversation gets even more interesting. Like, what are the actions we can take as individuals and as a global community to make sure that the world brain fulfills its potential? Right. How do we navigate the ethical challenges, address the biases, and bridge the divides that threaten to undermine this incredible tool? Those are some big questions and ones that deserve a much deeper dive. Well. Let's take a minute to gather our thoughts okay. and prepare to delve into the practical implications of Wells' vision. When we return, we're going to discuss what it really means to be responsible citizens of the world brain and how each of us can contribute to building a brighter future. All right, we're back and you know ready to tackle this question. What can we actually do to make sure this world brain, this network of knowledge and intelligence lives up to its potential? Uh. It's kind of easy to feel overwhelmed by the sheer scale of it. Right. Yeah. It's true. Like, the challenges are big. But remember, Wells himself believed in, like, the power of collective action. Yeah. He argued that a critical mass of informed, engaged people yeah. could make a real difference. I like It's all. not about waiting for some top-down solution. Right. But each of us taking responsibility for, like, the information we consume the way we interact with technology, mm -hmm. and the choices that we make in our lives. So less about being tech wizards and more about being informed citizens of the digital age. Exactly. Okay, that makes me feel a little more empowered. Yeah. But I need some concrete steps. Where do we start? Well, Wells, you know, was a big advocate for education. Yes. But not the kind that just focuses on memorizing facts. Right. He believed in cultivating critical thinking, the ability to analyze information, ID biases, and separate fact from fiction. He was ahead of his time in recognizing the importance of media literacy, wasn't he? Yeah. It's even more important now in this world of echo chambers and filter bubbles. Absolutely. Okay. So step one, we sharpen those critical thinking skills. But like, how? How do we do that? Well, there are lots of resources available, like online courses or workshops, even books and articles dedicated to just improving critical thinking skills. Yeah. But it also comes down to being more mindful every day, mm -hmm. you know, questioning the information that we encounter, considering different perspectives, yeah. being willing to change our minds when we see compelling evidence. So it sounds like a process. It is. Not a one-time fix. And it's easy to get complacent especially when we're surrounded by information that just confirms what we already believe. Right. How do we break out of the echo chambers? It takes effort. You have to seek out diverse sources of information. Mm -hmm. You have to engage in respectful dialogue with people who have different views. Yeah. And be willing to challenge your own assumptions, your own biases. It's really about cultivating intellectual humility and recognizing that we don't have all the answers mm. and that there's always more to learn. Wells would be proud of that answer. He was a big believer in lifelong learning, always questioning. Yeah. Always exploring. He even suggested that we shift our approach to history, advocate for a global perspective, one that starts with anthropology, the common origins of humankind. He saw history as a unifying force rather than one that divides us. By understanding our shared heritage, mm. he thought that we could overcome the, you know, artificial boundaries of nationalism yeah. and build a world that's more interconnected. So step two, embrace that global perspective. Mm. Learn about different cultures, engage with different communities, Ooh, yeah. and challenge those nationalistic narratives that can so easily lead to conflict and division. Exactly. You know, expanding our circles of empathy yeah. and recognizing our shared humanity. And that brings us to like another part of Wells's vision, using knowledge ethically. He understood that the world brain, with all of its power, could be misused. He was worried about propaganda, censorship, and a few powerful people controlling all the information. Yeah. It's a warning that's super relevant in our digital world. Right. We've seen how algorithms can be biased, how personal data can be exploited. Absolutely. And how misinformation can spread so quickly online. For sure. So how do we ensure that the world brain is used ethically for the benefit of everyone, not just for profit or the power of a few? Well, it begins with demanding transparency, mm -hmm. accountability from those who control these technologies. Yeah. You know, we need to know how our data is being used, who's profiting from it, and what steps are being taken to reduce bias and make sure things are fair. We also need to advocate for regulations that protect privacy and promote AI development that is ethical. It sounds like we need to be vigilant and proactive. Yeah. We can't just assume that all this technology will automatically lead to progress. Right. We have to shape it, guide it. Mm -hmm. and hold those in power accountable. Absolutely. It's a huge responsibility, Yeah, but it's also empowering. 
It is. Mm -hmm. Wells would agree. He believed that the future isn't something set in stone. Mm -hmm. It's something we create yeah. through our choices and actions. He saw the world brain as a tool, one with huge potential. Right. But it's our choice how we use it. Yeah. Will it be good? Will it be used for enlightenment, connection? Or will it divide us, control us, and be used to exploit? It's a stark choice. It is. But one that we all face together. Yeah. So what does this mean for us deep divers? We've been on this whirlwind tour of H.G. Wells' vision, and it's clear that we're living in the age of the world brain. We are. But that doesn't mean the story is over. Yeah. We're writing it every day with every click, every share, every decision we make. Wells left us with this powerful challenge to be more than just people who consume information. Right. To be active, engaged citizens in this world, to become yeah. better critical thinkers, to embrace a global perspective and demand ethical and responsible use of the incredible knowledge at our fingertips. He believed in the power of us working together, the possibility of a more informed, more just, more connected world. The challenges are real, but so is hope. Couldn't have said it better myself. So deep divers, go out there and be the change you want to see in the world brain. And if you found this deep dive enlightening, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your fellow knowledge seekers. Let's make a better future together one click at a time.